coordination organized by the U.S. State Department between the de facto president of Honduras, Roberto Micheletti, and the ousted president, Manuel Zelaya, has broken down. Zelaya originally agreed to the seven-point proposal put forward by the lead negotiator, Costa Rican President Oscar Arias, but Micheletti's coup government immediately rejected point number one, the creation of a reconciliation government with Zelaya as president. They cited the 18 criminal charges they have levied against him. President Arias has asked for 72 more hours to refine his proposal, but there doesn't appear to be much left to negotiate. A partir de este momento, nosotros empezamos a hacer toda la organización de la resistencia interna que nos lo garantiza la Constitución, que es un derecho nuestro, hacer toda la organización para mi retorno al país. The European Union reacted to the de facto government's refusal by canceling all international aid to Honduras. With protesters and the military at a deadlock inside the country and regional governments seemingly out of options for affecting the situation, attention has turned squarely on the United States. Supporters of the coup regime have been making regular trips to Washington to gather support. The Honduran chapter of SEAL, the Latin American Chamber of Commerce, hired Lanny Davis from the high-powered lobby firm Oric to plead their case. Davis is a close friend of the Clintons, having served as special counsel under then-President Bill Clinton and as a spokesperson for Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential campaign. He testified last week in front of the House Foreign Affairs Committee where it became very clear why he had been chosen. It is a pleasure uh, to be here in the presence of friends on both sides of the aisle. I see Congressman Delahunt, who I knew before his hair was gray, and is a great public servant, a great public servant. And I see Congressman Dan Burton, who at uh, some point in my past career, I was at times an adversary, but always friendly, always civil. And of course, my friend Chris Smith, uh, who I consider a very close personal friend and Chairman Engel and I happen to also be personal friends. Davis became a target on Tuesday when United Students Against Sweatshops hung this banner across the street from the window of his DC office. The group accuses Davis of lying to Congress about the legal grounds for Zelaya's removal. That he had to be removed from office because he violated the Constitution with a self-executing clause that says if you try to extend your term, you are automatically removed from the presidency. There is no evidence that Zelaya ever claimed to want to extend his term, and more importantly, the referendum he proposed for opening a constitutional assembly would have taken place at the same time as November's presidential election, that Zelaya is barred from participating in. This means that his replacement would be named long before the details of a new constitution would even be debated. The group also voiced their concerns about Davis's close relationship with Hillary Clinton, whose State Department, unlike President Obama, has not officially declared the events a military coup. That connection needed to be underlined so that both uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Lanny Davis know that this is not going unseen and that we're aware of it and that we're going to continue to focus on that relationship until Hillary Clinton properly uh, represents uh, the United States' original position, which was to denounce the Honduran coup. A delegation of Honduran leaders opposed to the coup came to Washington to provide their interpretation of the events. The Real News spoke to Hari Herrera, district attorney with the Attorney General's office, and Marvin Ponce, congressman with the Democratic Union Party, after a full day of meetings in the Capitol. Yo creo que el mensaje fue bien recibido porque es un mensaje basado en ley, basado en pruebas, porque nosotros acá venimos, no venimos a representar la gran empresa, no venimos a representar a maquilas ni a personas que se han hecho ricas con el dinero del Estado. Aquí venimos a representar a indígenas, venimos a representar a la raza garifona, venimos a representar a campesinos, a obreros, a personas eh, necesita, necesitadas en Honduras. O sea, la, el grupo de hondureños más necesitado de Honduras, a contrario de lo que vinieron eh, la semana pasada, expresidentes que se hicieron millonarios con el dinero del Estado, empresarios que se han hecho multimillonarios con el dinero del Estado, entonces nosotros venimos con la verdad y nosotros no tenemos ningún contacto con el presidente Zelaya. Yo soy fiscal del Ministerio Público, el diputado Ponce es un diputado de un partido opositor al partido del presidente Zelaya. Lo único que queremos es que se restituya el Estado de Derecho 
y que los hondureños podemos gozar de nuestra pequeña y débil democracia, pero democracia al fin. Davis isn't the only one in Washington lobbying on behalf of the crew government. A delegation of Honduran business leaders and ex-politicians had their press conference interrupted by anti-coup protesters. Herrera disputes their interpretation of the Constitution. Lo que se utilizó fue el artículo 205, que establece las atribuciones del Congreso Nacional. Y entre ellas, entre las atribuciones está la de aprobar o, o improbar la conducta administrativa del presidente, pero... En ninguno de esos artículos está la posibilidad de que el Congreso Nacional pueda destituir al presidente. Entonces, lo que han venido a decir aquí a Washington, empresarios, expresidentes, es totalmente falso. Han venido a torcer la verdad en Washington y nosotros como, como juristas que somos, de muchos años en el Ministerio Público, podemos decir con mucha claridad que todo el proceso de expulsión del presidente se le haya sido totalmente ilegal y que por tal razón tiene que regresar para restablecer nuestro Estado de Derecho y hayan elecciones generales o, o, se, o que el pueblo pida una constituyente, pero que tiene que regresar para que los hondureños sintamos que hemos vuelto a la normalidad. Far from normality, today the specter of greater conflict is looming in the streets of Honduras. In this context, D.C. has become a lobbying hotspot due to all the cards that the U.S. is still holding. It has yet to call back its ambassador from Honduras. It hasn't cut off all international aid. It has not frozen the bank accounts of the coup leaders, nor cancelled their U.S. visas. It has not imposed any kind of economic or trade sanctions, a powerful option given that 70% of Honduran exports head to the United States. And though the Pentagon announced it was suspending joint operations with Honduras, its military base at Palmerola remains operational. And a spokesperson confirmed to the National Catholic Reporter that the training of Honduran military officers at the notorious School of the Americas in Fort Benning, Georgia, is continuing as usual. This is the same facility that graduated the current leader of the Honduran military, General Romeo Vasquez, along with five others that have taken up leadership positions in the coup government. Esto significa realmente prácticamente un retroceso tremendo en términos políticos y económicos. Significa prácticamente en la historia, como usted lo planteaba, volver a la República Bananera, que es la influencia fuerte del gobierno norteamericano, de las multinacionales y de la clase política criolla, que no le importa bajarle los niveles políticos al país con, con solamente mantener sus privilegios. Este retroceso realmente va a ser un fuerte golpe que va a, va a ser difícil volver a restituir. Sin embargo, lo, lo, lo que está claro que hay, hay, lo, la gran ventaja que nos, que nos queda de este golpe es que el pueblo se ha unido alrededor realmente de defender su democracia, el pueblo se ha unido a, a, a defender esta causa, se ha generado una serie de movilizaciones, ha habido represión, el pueblo ha resistido la represión. But life for those in Honduras who agree with Ponce and Herrera continues to be extremely difficult under the coup government que medios de comunicación están siendo cerrados, que periodistas están siendo golpeados. Actualmente han vuelto a poner el toque de queda, hoy lo restablecieron, cerraron ya otra vez las televisoras que, se, que habían reiniciado su transmisión. O sea, lo que pasa en Honduras es terrible. A preliminary report tabled by Honduras' leading human rights monitor, COFADE, has registered over 1,100 human rights violations since the coup, including three killings, the detention of over 1,000 people, and 27 incidences of attacks, intimidation, or censorship of media outlets and journalists. The last three weeks has also seen the return to public life of many figures from Honduras' dark past, including Billy Hoya, a known leader of the Honduran death squads of the 1980s and the infamous Battalion 316. He is now serving as a special advisor to Micheletti, as well as appearing as a regular commentator on national television. At the time of the coup, Manuel Zelaya was only seven months away from the end of his term and banned from seeking re-election. So why take such a risk of overthrowing him? Ponce and Herrera believe that the coup wasn't really about Zelaya at all. It came from the fear of a new constitution. In part two, we explore the roots of the fight over the most important document in Honduras. Permanente.